Looks like we have a new top ranking coding framework on the Sway Bench where it's actually achieving a 22% success rate on the Sway Bench Lite benchmark, which is used to assess how a framework is able to resolve real world issues through GitHub, like bug fixes, yep, debugging, code generation, as well as feature addition. Now for the record, Sway Agent, which was another framework I had covered in the same category, and it actually achieved a 12.3 percentage on this benchmark. And if you are to take a look at Devon, it had achieved a 13.86 percentage. So what is this new framework that outranks Sway Agent and Devon? This is where I would like to introduce Autocode Rover. This is an autonomous program improvement framework, which is a fully automated approach for resolving GitHub issues like debugging. You have code generation as well. You have feature addition and so much more. Just take a look at this demo video, which will provide you more insights on it. So what does Autocode Rover do? In a word, Autocode Rover takes in a GitHub issue and outputs a patch that resolves the issue. It can do both bug fixes and feature additions. Autocode Rover works in two stages. Given an issue statement, Autocode Rover would first rover in the code base and collect relevant context to find out the buggy locations. In the second stage, Autocode Rover tries to generate patches at the buggy locations to actually resolve the issue. Let us get into more details about the two stages. In the first stage, Autocode Rover has a set of code search APIs. Autocode Rover would interact with an LLM agent to decide what APIs to call and with what arguments. The decided API calls would then be executed locally by Autocode Rover to retrieve the relevant code snippets. And the code snippets would be returned to the agent for further analysis. The code search can go on for multiple rounds until the agent decides that enough context has been collected to pinpoint the buggy location. Let us see a real-world example from the Django project. So here is the issue statement talking about a missing piece of error information in the code. Autocode Rover would provide a set of six search APIs such as search class, search method in file, and search method in class. Autocode Rover would prompt the agent to analyze the issue and select necessary API calls. So what does the agent select? In this case, the agent selects two API calls for searching classes and another two API calls for searching for a method. So these four API calls would be executed locally by Autocode Rover. For example, for this class, we have retrieved all its member variables as well as all its member functions. This context would be analyzed further by the agent. Here is the analysis. As we can see, this context has already provided the agent with some insights into the root cause and the resolution of the issue. We have another round of code search to do before we have enough context to decide on the buggy location. Sorry for being repetitive, but this month we had insane partnerships with big companies giving out subscriptions to AI tools completely for free. These are tools that will streamline your business's growth and improve your efficiency. Just being a patron this past month, you were given access to six paid subscriptions completely for free. Not only do you access these subscriptions, but you gain the ability for consulting, networking, collaborating with the community, as well as with myself. You get access to daily AI news, resources, giveaways, and so much more. If you're interested, check out the Patreon link in the description below to gain access to these benefits. So here is the buggy method, which is the two Python method in the method choice field class. With this buggy location, we would then go into the second stage of the workflow. In the second stage, Autocode Rover would first retrieve the code at the buggy location, then prompt another LLM agent to write a patch. If, the patch, it, if it turns out that the patch cannot be applied to the program, 
autocode drawer would prompt the agent to write another patch. Finally, we would get a patch that can be applied to the program. Back to this example, we would first retrieve the code at this buggy to, Pyth to Python method. And then we would prompt the agent to write a patch in such a format. So here is the agent written patch. It turns out that the patch can be applied to the program. And here is the patch that we have extract extracted. It turns out that this patch can be applied to the program and it can correctly resolve the issue. So that's the end of the workflow. Now, as you can see from that demo video, you were able to see that it pulled an example issue from Django. And this is where Autocode Reaver was able to successfully fix that issue. And we can see that it was able to describe the issue, resolve it with the different commits, and even give you a resolution as to what needs to be implemented in particular areas. And that's the capability of Autocode. Now, I know this video is already halfway from being finished, but let's get straight into the video and showcase some other capabilities around this. If you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one with me where you can access my consulting services, where I can help you grow your business or basically give you a lot of different types of solutions with AI. Definitely take a look at the calendar link in the description below. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the world of AI. Let's take a look at Autocode Rover so we get a better idea as to what you can do with it. They have a research paper which I truly recommend that you take a look at. I won't be able to go very in depth into each segment of it as this video will just end up being 20 minutes long. But I truly recommend that you take a look at each section because it's really interesting as to how they develop this. And it showcases a lot of tests. And we can see on the Sway Bench Lite which is consisting of 300 real world GitHub issues. Autocode Rover was able to resolve 22% of the issues which is improving over the current state of the art efficiency of ai software engineering we saw that this was is something that out compassed sway agent it's something that outranked even devon which is really great to see and one of the two like main features that autocode rover has is firstly the program structure where code search api where unlike conventional string matching like systems you have autocode rovers code search api which is going to be able to develop into abstract syntax tree and this is to pinpoint relevant code context such as methods like classes and this is in the abstract syntax free tree and secondly, we have utilization of the test suite. This is where it's going to leverage the test cases and ACR Autocode Rover is going to be able to enhance repair rates through the statistical fault localization. So this is where it's going to be particularly used when a test suite is accessible. And this is where it can be able to function with these two key criteria. Now, if you're interested, you can actually get started with this and you can actually build this with Docker. It's super easy. They have an easy way to get started. You can run these two commands and you can then build your container and then export your open AI API key into the container so that you can utilize the API key from the large language model that is provided from open AI. Once you have done that, you can even set up one or more tasks in Sway Bench and it showcases the step-by-step -step process as to how you can do this. You can run single tasks, multiple tasks, as well as work on it collaboratively, which is really great to see. Now they also have an enhancement leverage test case. So let's take a look at this video, which showcases this. The first enhancement is spectrum based photo localization, also known as SBFL. What does SBFL do? Basically SBFL executes test cases and records their execution traces. From the execution traces, SBFL would calculate a suspiciousness score for every method, indicating the likelihood that the bug is located in the methods. We would not get into details about the calculation, but the general idea of SBFL is that a method is more suspicious if it appears in the execution traces of more failing test cases and if it appears in the execution traces of fewer passing test cases. The suspiciousness scores calculated by SBFL provide additional clues for the context retrieval agent 
so that it is more likely to find the buggy locations. Let us see a real-world example of how SBFL helps. So this is an issue taken from the Django project talking about incorrect relation handling. In this issue description, we can see a lot of class names and variable names, but none of them is the root cause of the issue. Instead, they are just distractions. On the other hand, the root cause of the issue, which is the relation handling, is quite inconspicuous in the its description. As a result, it would be quite difficult for the context retrieval agent to know where to search. For example, in our experiment, the context retrieval agent searched in three irrelevant places. As a result, Autocode Rover could not write a correct patch for this issue. So what do we do? SBFL would come to the rescue. With SBFL, we can list the most suspicious methods. And in fact, the third most suspicious method is actually the buggy method. We also noted that there is the word related in the name of the method, which coincides with the relation keyword that appeared in the issue description. With these two pieces of information, the context retrieval agent actually knew to search in the actual buggy method. As a result, Autocode Rover could write a correct patch with the help of SBFL, and this patch is equivalent to the patch written by the developer. The second enhancement made in the patch generation stage is patch validation. In the original workflow, we the workflow stops as soon as we find a patch that can be syntactically applied to the original program. With test cases, we can do better. Whenever we generate a patch, we can run the we can make the patched program run all the test cases to see if the patch is a correct patch. If the patch is not correct, then we can take another try. In total, we allow Autocode Rover to make at most three attempts, and this has increased the chance that Autocode Rover writes the correct patch. And that's about it for today's video on Autocode Rover. I definitely will be making another video on this in the future because I found it to be kind of pretty like useful. And it's something that is the best relevant source for debugging as well as solving real world issues on GitHub. Now, eventually we're going to see this number or this percentage where this 22% a success rate on the Sway bench is going to obviously increase over time. And I truly believe that by the end of this year, we might even see something that scores 40 or above. And that's a really like conservative target. It could even be more than that, but something that I'm definitely going to be covering on this channel because it is allowing coders as well as software engineers to use tools and frameworks such as this to help them out in their mundane tasks. And this is something that we'll obviously keep on covering on this channel. So definitely stay tuned. Make sure you follow us on the Patreon if you haven't already, because this is a great way for you to access subscriptions completely for free. We have 52 members who are enjoying these benefits. So definitely stay Stay tuned, uh, as in the AI Mystic, you have 20 with these as well as 48 with these. Make sure you follow us on Twitter if you haven't already. This is a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.